Riley. Um, the Lakers will be honoring Pat Riley with a new statue um, at, at outside Staples Center. So you obviously have Kobe there, Magic, Kareem. I know uh, um, you have Chick Hearn. You have, uh, I think, a couple other luminaries there. Um, Pat Riley will be the latest one. My question for you is this, though. It's easy to forget that Pat Riley was once the coach of the Lakers because he's been with the Miami Heat now almost 30 years now as a, as a coach, as a president, GM. He's coached the Knicks, obviously. What franchise do you most remember Riley for at this point now, 2024? At this point, knowing his whole career, um, it's the Lakers, man. And it's the Lakers? For me, it's the Lakers for me because you, 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 for those that are in my class, in my range, in terms of age, in terms of being on this earth, you, you, you see, obviously, you know, he's in Miami, you know what he's done there as an executive, as a coach, and you see New York, but then you see uh, LA. It didn't, I didn't have that thought process until I watched the Lakers series winning time. Yeah. Not until I watched that. And I said, Oh yeah, no, like you have to watch winning time to understand why Pat Riley needs Pat Riley gets an actual statue in LA. Okay. You have to understand he wasn't even picked first to be the coach. No. You have to understand he had to earn those players' respect. You have to understand that those the players that they had at the time didn't respect him. He had to juggle egos, multiple, won multiple championships, had to rein these guys in for winning one championship and told them you won one championship. Now you guys are soft like a bunch of pussies. I say, yo, this guy, Pat Riley, is, is the mafia done. And once once I understood what he did in L.A., then obviously took his uh, talents over to New York, tried to do something there, and took his. Ta- he said, "You know what? New York sucks. I'm, a, I'm <laughs> I like sun. <laughs> went down to Miami. <laughs> went down to Miami. Um, yeah, L.A. is the place for him. L.A. is where he made his name as Pat Riley. So I agree with the, that part about like that's why he made his name and all that stuff and his bones and and the whole Don the whole slick back hair the whole image of Suave and Riley that that started in Miami uh, in LA rather, but the reason why I go Heat Miami Heat for me more than anything else and I'm not even trying to be a homer here because that's my team obviously. The my the whole Miami Heat identity is all measured around Pat Riley and, and what he's built. You guys remember my Pat Riley changed. Not as the Heat franchise. He changed sports down here for us um, at a time where in 1985, um, people only cared about the Dolphins and Hurricanes football. Hockey was still brand new at the time, so no one cared. Baseball was still new at the time. Florida Marlins. Pat, right, right, right. They, they, they're only two years old at the point. The Miami Heat at that point, and I was a fan before Riley even got there. I was a fan you know, from the Chaffel Cunningham era, year two. Pat Riley put an imprint on this community to where Miami basketball is what a heat up till now in the last couple of years, I, I still argue it's still the, the argue the biggest franchise in the in the in the in the uh the city in the community. That started Pat Riley. And him as a head coach, as a president, the whole the whole godfather complex he got. That wasn't Miami. That wasn't done in LA or, or New York. That wasn't Miami. So to me, because of the imprint on the franchise itself, like when you think Miami Heat, you think of Pat Riley. When you think of, think of the Lakers, you think of many people. Pat, Pat Riley's one of them, but he's, but, he's, but he's not the sole person you think about. You think of Miami Heat, you think of Pat Riley. So for me, yeah. it's Miami for me. And, and I think also the longevity too also, which on 30 years now. 30 years, three championships as a coach or president GM, you know, in a, in a market where it, it they had, had no business thriving in it, you know. I mean, obviously, Riley is a Mount Rushmore coach all the time. I mean, the, the, the work with New York, you know, he, he didn't get a ring there. He still did great work at New York, turned them around, you know. But to me, the longevity and just the imprint of this franchise, like we still think of Miami Heat and Pat Riley first. Pat Riley, yeah, Pat Riley is a G. He's seen too much back. Yeah, Pat Riley was on the team. People forget this too. Pat Riley was on that Kentucky team that got cracked mm. <laughs> by Texas Wesley. <laughs> the first time they put five black guys in the starting lineup, 
mm-hmm. for the championship game. <laughs> Kentucky was like, what? Yeah, really? This is what y'all doing? Like five? Uh, okay. Western Texas, Western Texas, Texas Wesleyan, I believe it. They said we're doing this for everybody. <laughs> we're doing this for the states. <laughs> we're putting we're putting the whooping on these on these balls. <laughs> Pat Riley looked. Pat Ray asked Pat Riley about that joint. He said. I never got my ass kicked like that before. <laughs> change, change that shit up real fast. <laughs> nah, but not to me. It's Miami, though. To me, it's, it's, I might even be a homer here. It's just that the imprint. To me, it's the imprint. Like, you think of the Lakers, you think of, like, many people. Kobe, Phil Jackson. Pat. I mean, it's questionable whether uh, he's a great coach in Lakers history, to be honest with you. It's questionable. It's going to be an argument down the line. Who was bigger, Phil Jackson or 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 freaking... Phil Jackson or, or, or Pat Riley, who was bigger? There's going to be an argument down the line. Yeah. And, and it's going to be a, a fair argument, whether because clearly we already saw what Phil Jackson did as a freaking executive. Nothing. Right. Um, so that's one thing Pat Riley has over him. They both were players. Uh, I think they both won championships as players. Yeah. I'm looking here. Say yes. Yeah. Riley yeah, was as, on the 70s Lakers team, actually. You say yes. One, so they both won championships as players, both won championships as coaches, mm-hmm. but he's not the executive Pat Riley is. Nope. And so, you know, it's going to be a conversation of overall who was, you know, who was the one, who was the yeah. guy. But yeah, but no, he deserves everything um, he gets. You know, again, he was he was everything at Kentucky and then they then they got cracked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They got yeah. cracked in, in six. Texas Western 66. <laughs> Jesus. Got, 1966. No, they didn't get lose by 66. They in 1966, they got cracked. Right. Go see good movie, Glory Road. Great movie. Mm-hmm. Uh I, I loved it. Loved every minute of it. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I gotta watch that. Glory. I don't I heard of it. I've never seen it before though. Glory, Glory Road d- depicted that exact basically it was a uh, I will check it out, definitely. And that's what's what's funny is like Glory Road had to be made in when for you to even know that this happened. Oh six, it's two thousand six. So that tells you how long ago. Two th- in two thousand six, they made a movie about night a night in nineteen sixty six. A true story about literally Don Haskins, head coach, uh, uh, coached the team with the all black starting lineup, a first in NCAA history. Mm-hmm. They literally had to wait till two thousand. We had to wait till two thousand six to know that story happened in a movie. You feel me? Yeah, that should have been spoken about way earlier. But you know the vibes. I know and the for vibes. the record, and for the record, real quick, we'll back up Pat Riley. He will get a statue of Miami as all said and done. So he'll have two. <laughs> There's no doubt. Miami, there, there is no doubt he'll get he'll be getting a statue of Miami at some point down the road. There's no doubt about that. No doubt about that. So he'll have he'll have two. I love it. And he deserves it. I love yep. it because he deserves it. Yep. That's it. All right, brother. Anyone to plug? Man, listen, you know the vibes. It's in the game podcast. Randy J. Cruz, Sir Danny Blanco. Turn your notifications on. Um, we're just trying to compete with these other uh podcasts. We you know bring it to you live and live and quick, as, as well as uh the high entertainment value education and so forth. So we're gonna obviously we, we interview a bunch of people. Uh we're definitely gonna be getting some folks on in the near future. We just interviewed Rashid Wallace. I saw that weeks, yeah, a couple weeks back. So for those who haven't watched that, take a look at that. Very fun, very exciting. I wish I had him on for more. I have way more questions. Um, but yeah, no, check us out. Sir Denny Blanco's the handle again, blue sky, Twitter. TikTok, Instagram, and whatever new uh, uh, social media platform is going to come out. <laughs> it seems there's like 39 of them. Uh, are you, follow- you're not leaving You're not leaving X, are you? You're not going to leave X, right? Bro, I, I, no, I'm not going to leave X. Uh, you know, I got Blue Sky up, but yeah, no, I, got mine too I, I, I won't leave. Yeah, I won't leave. I'll just be, you know, I'll just be, you know, you'll just see me with the eye emojis most of the time. Just the, <laughs> You'll just see me with the eye emojis most of the time. Um, Elon yeah, sounds no. cool, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it's a lot going on there, but yeah, once again, thank you, EJ, for having me on. It's Sir Denny Blanco's the handle. Hit me up all, all platforms. If you have any questions, concerns, you don't like what I said, explain why, and I'll holler back. You heard? Yes, sir. Good job, man.
Thank you.